go this on conference will now be recorded. Yeah. Okay. So everybody, uh, my name is Chef Rob. Welcome. Uh, it's been a while since I've been to the Patrick Medford Library and uh, Jesse, who just recently started there. Uh, you will absolutely love her. Uh, I worked with her over at Elwood and you will have a lot of great programs, I promise you. Um, and Nancy, who has been there a while, we have been working together for quite a few years too. So thank you both for having me. I am going to start, I'm gonna ask everybody to get your, uh, the medium sized bowl first, okay? Not the largest one, the medium bowl. We're gonna do the dry ingredients first, okay? You don't have to have gloves. I just happen to use them because I'm touching every single different thing here. And uh, sometimes I'll be wearing them at home. Sometimes I won't be, okay? But I remember for a few months, we were wearing them everywhere we went, right? We are pumping gas, everything. So what I want everybody to do is take two cups of flour. So if you can kind of watch what I do. Baking, you have to be really exact. It's not like doing a roast chicken where you're a little bit too much garlic or salt. Everything will be okay. You need the flour, two cups, just like this, to be nice and level. I'm using the all-purpose flour. I'm just going to go slow so everybody can take their time. If anybody is not keeping up with us and you want us to slow down, please just let us know, okay? Let Jesse know, let Chris know, and they'll tell me, hey, Rob, slow down, okay? Okay. And you can always give a thumbs up too, all right? Thumbs up or just the, hey, it's all good, or thumbs down means slow down, Rob, all right? So now this is very important. We're going to put some cornstarch in there. So I hope you all have everything for this recipe. We want two teaspoons of the cornstarch. And again, being exact, you have to level it and make it really nice and smooth, just like that. Always keep all your dry ingredients in a dry, dark place. They will last a lot longer for you, okay? So you should have two cups of flour, two teaspoons of cornstarch. Okay, I want you to have one teaspoon of the baking soda, not baking powder, but baking soda. There is a difference. The baking soda is used more in cookies because it usually kind of makes it spread out more. Baking powder is more for like a quick bread and will make it rise higher, okay? And then I want you to do a half teaspoon of the salt, just the regular table salt, just like that. You do want to put the salt in. Some people say, I want to cut back on the salt, but what the salt does, it's a flavor enhancer, so it brings out all the different flavors that would be in this, okay? In the chocolate chip cookie pizza. Take your wire whisk and just start mixing it and get all those ingredients really nice and mixed well. But if the kids are doing it, make sure you keep it all in the bowl. If any gets on the table, just scoop it right back because if you are missing a little bit, it will change it a lot. So after you have all the dry ingredients, I just want you to leave that bowl right on the side. Okay, so you are gonna take a quarter cup of the granulated sugar, just like that. Make sure you shake it just like that. You don't want to have too much like that, and you don't want to have too little like that. If you have too little, it will not come out as uh, soft and the, the right texture and the moisture for it. When you're baking, if the recipe calls for a certain amount, make sure it is exact. So a quarter cup of the granulated sugar. Everybody doing good out there? Let's get some thumbs up or some comments. Okay. Yep, we're good. Oh, you guys are great. How many? How many are you doing this with us tonight? Um, 
I see there's eight people logged in, but I know that one of the families had two girls, so probably a little more than eight. Um, okay. Just, Good. Yeah. Just so you guys know, I um I put the ingredients back in the chat too. So if you um are going through and you're like, how much did he say? You can go into that chat feature. It's just a little talk bubble on the top right hand side of the screen, and you can see how many um how much of each ingredient is in there. And also, if you haven't already, preset your oven to 350, right, Rob? Yes, 350. Yes. Yeah. So everybody, next, I want you to take a quarter cup and a half cup of the brown sugar. It could be the light or the dark, but brown sugar is different than the white sugar. The white sugar, you level it like that. Brown sugar is very heavy because it has molasses in it. So make sure it's really nice and flat, but it's packed in there. And then the half cup. So all together, three quarters of a cup. You guys are gonna like this chocolate chip cookie pizza. It's a really good recipe and it will last for days. If anybody likes, and this will come out on the softer side. If anybody likes a soft chocolate chip cookie or any type of cookie, and it comes out a little crispy, take a Ziploc bag, put all the cookies in the bag, and put a slice of bread in there. And what happens is the bread gets hard and the cookies get softer. Okay, so you could try that one out. Now I'm gonna take three quarters of a cup of soft butter. So hopefully you took it out about an hour or so ago. If you didn't, just take it out of the refrigerator, put it in the microwave for about six, seven seconds, just to get it where it's, you can see how I can really kind of squeeze in here. Okay, so you need one and a half sticks. Okay, make sure again that that is exact. I use unsalted butter because if you use unsalted butter, you're starting out with no salt in your recipe and then you always know how much to put in. If you only have salted butter at home, each stick has a quarter teaspoon of salt in it. So then what you would do is just reduce it in the dry ingredients, okay? Okay, so if you have gloves or uh, something to kind of mix it with, or if you have an electric mixer, just get it where it's really combined and you can only see one texture. So my son, Chris, is gonna zoom in on this. I'm doing this on a kind of a slow speed and I can always pick up the pace in a second. I may have to go in at the end and just kind of mash it together with my hands. That's fine. want to do this for about two minutes so if you are doing it by hand really get a little rough with it okay with this with the beater on medium uh, this will come out really good it's getting very combined right now okay I'm going to let everybody get caught up because I had everything, the mixer, I had everything laid out. I want to make sure at home everybody is caught up. Give me those thumbs up or thumbs down too, okay? Okay, we got some thumbs up. Good. You guys are really good. Maybe you guys should teach the class and I'll sit back and make <laughs> Okay, if everybody is caught up, two teaspoons of the pure vanilla extract. Make sure you use the pure because the imitation one, it's really just water. <laughs> you can buy that for about $2 a bottle for the imitation, but you're better off just letting that in the supermarket. A bottle like this at like a Costco or BJ is about $30. About five years ago, it was about $6.99. What a big difference. Okay, put the two teaspoons of vanilla in here and then one egg. 
If you took the egg out about an hour ago, it will be at room temperature, which is perfect. If you're just taking it out now, no worries, it will come out all fine. But whenever you're baking, always take the egg out about an hour ahead of time, because when everything is at room temperature for baking, the right consistency comes out and it kind of incorporates the batter really easily, okay? So I am just gonna take this beater and mix this all together. I'm here. I'm beating this on high. Just make sure that if you have a spatula, you kind of get all that stuff off the sides. Okay, just make sure it's really, really good and incorporated. Okay, what I want everybody to do now, and again, put a thumbs down if you want me to slow down. You have all these dry ingredients. You're gonna add these into the wet. Chris and I have about, I think we have about four or five of these classes this week, the chocolate chip cookie pizza. This is like one of the most popular ones all summer for the children. Ready? So we're going to start beating this. Just going to start it on low. I just want to get it combined. I don't want to overmix the batter. If you overmix batter, it can really change the consistency. Okay, so just on a low speed. Anybody have any questions out there for me? I can handle questions, you guys. <laughs> Chris can too, you know. He could probably answer them for me. If you wanted to, could you add other things besides chocolate chips? Like if you wanted yeah, to add M&M's and anything like that. Chips. You could add some chopped up walnuts, uh, dried cranberries, dried cherries to this. Uh, you can change this around a lot. And then what's really good that it becomes a pizza is you can decorate it. So if like a Halloween, you want to make a really big pumpkin, just put an orange icing on it and really decorate it. So there's a lot of different things we, you could do with this. So this batter is all mixed here. Everybody should have a nice, wet, sticky batter. Now you want one and a quarter cups of the chocolate chips. I'm using the semi-sweet, but if you're using dark or milk chocolate, it's all fine. So a quarter cup. <laughs> and a half cup. I am using the little mini ones. I think they kind of spread throughout, but uh, you don't have to use them. Okay, I'm just going to get this batter off of here. You can take your electric mixer or your hands and just get it to where it is combined. Get anything off the sides. Okay, and then what you could do is just kind of let it hit the side of the bowl, kind of tap it off, and the batter should come off. I get a little jammed up in there. So what I'm going to do is I, I take it off so I don't cut myself, and I'm just going to take this batter out like this. Okay, so take your batter, just make sure it, it's mixed up and it looks like a real good cookie dough. Okay, your batter should never, your batter should never have a shine on it. If it has a shine on it, it means you were going like this with it. You were working the dough too hard. You just, you want it to have a dull look to it. If you see all those chocolate chips mixed throughout it, just stop, okay? 
I know for you kids, it's fun to mix that dough and keep playing with it, right? All right. I'm going to wait to see how we are all doing out there. If we cut up. Mass and Chris. Uh, I don't see anyone making it on here, but they just have their cameras on. You hear how windy it is out there? I couldn't hear that. Hear from here. Collaboration makes New York City successful as well. The forming of theaters in the heart of it. Okay, so everybody. If you have a pizza pan like this, great. If you don't, no worries, okay? Put it on a, a little sheet tray. Uh, you need like either parchment paper or one of those silicone baking mats. Okay, this is a uh, this is about a 12 inch uh, pizza pan. So what I am going to do is cut a piece of parchment paper. I just kind of layer it over the pizza pan, and then what I want to do is just trim these little edges off. Because parchment paper, it can only take a heat up to 450 degrees. We're only at 350, so we have no worries at all. But you never want extra paper floating around in your oven. Because if it hits a coil, it could catch fire. Okay, so everybody should be kind of doing this now. I'm going to give everybody a second to kind of catch up. Okay, anybody any questions or want me to slow down or even pick up the pace? We're good. All right. So everybody, when this is done, you're going to put it in a 350 oven. And if you haven't done so yet, put on your oven right now at 350. And you want it to bake for about 22 to 25 minutes. So everybody take your dough and put it on the pizza pan just like that. It's like one giant chocolate chip cookie. Okay, everybody, start pressing it down. You don't have to be rough with it. Just keep pressing it until it almost covers the whole pan. Trying to take the, your fist and push it down on it. Yes, if you want to drive out the ham bays, I'll give you a large uh, chocolate chip cookie pizza to go. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. I wish I, I wish I was making one, and we have a, a twenty month old, and there's just no way she would let me do this. You know, my uh -huh. five year old would love it, but we would have flour. Right. It would just be a disaster. <laughs> I have to tell you a funny story. I did this at another library. I won't tell you which person. Uh, good. Uh, she was making it along with the class, and she was the one that forgot ingredients. <laughs> yep. Every, the whole class had everything right, though. <laughs> okay, so everybody, keep pressing it. The dough should be a little warm. Okay, so you should be able to press it really, really good. How's everybody doing out there? Remember, you need parchment paper or you need one of those baking mats. Very, very important because if you put it on aluminum foil or just a pan with some spray, it's really going to get burnt because there's no protection underneath it. Okay. Okay, can everybody see? So everybody, this is the way it should look. 
And that's in a 350 oven for 22 to 25 minutes. Now I want to show everybody something. When, when it reaches 350 in your oven, I want you to put it towards the lower rack, okay? And then I want you to cut a piece of aluminum foil and not put it on top. I want you to put it across the rack above where it at least covers the whole pizza. And what that will do is it will keep the pizza, the chocolate chip cookie pizza, nice and soft. And it will not make it too brown or too crisp, okay? So a sheet of aluminum foil on the rack above. Diane, you remember me saying this out in the class, right, before? Yes. Yes. I, I knew you have. <laughs> Diane, what was your favorite thing that we ever made? Scones. The chocolate cranberry scones? Yep. And the uh, taco the lasagna. And the taco lasagna. Oh, yeah, thank you. I just did that one the other day. Yep, I did that one virtually. Yep, those two are my favorite. So everybody, if you have that done, put it in the oven, but I don't want you to go anywhere yet, okay? <laughs> we ain't got nowhere to go right now, right? <laughs> How many, how many people made it out there? Can I get a little feedback on how many people are actually making it with me? Huh? Uh, not too sure how many made it with me. No. Okay. All right, everybody. You should, be, you should be finishing the pizza right now. I want you to look at me, though, okay? Everybody, this has nothing to do with chocolate chip cookie pizza now. I got a I got a red potato right here. I have an apple core. It's one of the metal ones. I'm going to insert this about halfway. I'm going to put part of the apple uh, core right there. And then I'm just going to take this very sharp knife and I'm going to cut through until I hit the bar. OK, I'm just hitting the bar here. And I go all the way around. And now when, when I put when I push off, I got a mushroom potato. <laughs> so I used I used to be a personal chef for the man who created the phone book years ago. And what I would do was I'd brush this little olive oil, kosher salt, and black pepper, and roast it for about 40 minutes in a 400 oven. And I put it next to a steak, put it next to a prime rib, something like that. And it just looked really neat. Immediately. Cool. Community leaders. Way to go. They can't know. Good. So, yep. Okay. So everybody, in, in a couple weeks, uh, I think this year, maybe the first week of August, it's going to be Shark Week. So, uh, I'm gonna, I want to show the kids something that you could make uh, for, for Shark Week when, when it's coming up. That, so it gives you plenty of time to go out and get the ingredients. Now, right here, I, I'm using a very thin red velvet cake, but it doesn't have to be that. It could be a giant muffin. It could be a giant chocolate chip cookie. Okay, it could be a giant chocolate chip cookie pizza. So what I want to do with this, I want to take some blue icing. All this is is buttercream and blue food dye. And I am just going to spread this on here. If you bring it to room temperature, it will spread really well. I only like using buttercream for decorating because the kids only really like the buttercream. So that's why I kind of stick with this. It might not look as pretty, but it tastes so much better. 
Okay, so get it really nice and smooth, just like that. And then to make it to make it a little like Shark Week, you can take some little rocks, little rocks, and I'm using fruity pebbles, but you could always take uh, like little chocolate candy rocks and that will look good. I'm, I'm, go I'm gonna put a Swedish fish on here. I'm gonna put some of the little gold fish crackers around here. So anything fish will work, all right? And try to get all the different colored ones. The supermarket has these where you can buy all the different colored fish. And then I have some very small gummy sharks. Actually, I can like the medium sized ones. Just like that. And then I am, I'm going to finish this off with a real jumbo one, okay? So it's a really cool project. It's a really cool project that you can, you know, use to make it at home. Again, you don't have to make a cake. You can use a big cookie. You can use a giant muffin, like a Costco or BJ's type muffin or the ones at the delis, okay? And you can always put some graham cracker crumbs on there as far as like the sand. Okay, so you can change this around a lot. So I just want, I want to tell everybody, uh, if anybody wants to follow me on the Facebook, uh, I'm going to put our schedule up for next week on there so you can go to a lot of different libraries. So my Facebook page is Simply Creative Chef Rob Scott. And I just want to give everybody a couple uh, different places where you can see me do some programs if you want to see them. And uh, tomorrow, tomorrow night at seven o'clock on Facebook, the Hicksville Public Library is, I'm gonna make a uh, chicken marsala stuffed with fontina cheese and prosciutto. Mm. It's really delicious. Okay, so if you want to watch that, seven o'clock tomorrow. Uh, on Tuesday at 2 o'clock, and this one is Facebook Live, too. It's the Hudson Public Library. It's actually in Massachusetts. Uh, Chris and I have been doing libraries kind of all over the country right now. So uh, this one is in Massachusetts. What is the big rush trend? On Wednesday at 11 o'clock, Deer Park. Thursday at 7 o'clock is Shelter Rock, which is in Nassau County. And then Friday, uh, we're in doing Evans City, uh, and that's in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Wow. Who said wow? Yeah. Who said wow? Diane did. Diane. <laughs> <laughs> and then Diane, you'll like this one. Saturday night at seven o'clock, Mastic Shirley. Hey. That's where I see you a lot of times too. Yeah. Besides your library patchwork. So I just want to see, does anybody have any questions out there for me? We don't have to go anywhere yet, but if anybody has baking questions, cooking questions, please feel Someone free. Someone asks if they are all on Facebook. Uh, I know tomorrow night is on Facebook. The one at Hudson Public Library is on Facebook. Uh, actually, Comps on Tuesday night at 6.30 is Facebook. Well, Show the Rock, I believe, is uh, Facebook, and then so is Evans City, okay? So hopefully we'll get into the libraries soon, okay? I hope everybody is practicing with their mask and keep on you. You don't need any more practice, do you? But we got to keep everybody. You know, today was like one of the first days I was really 
up the island. I was all over the island kind of doing shopping for classes. And everybody that I ran into had their mask on. You know, there was no nothing about. And that's why we're doing pretty good here in New York. So uh, keep it going and tell your friends, family, keep it going so we can get back into the libraries. Uh, and always check Patrick Medford's website all the time because they're always, we just booked this class about two weeks ago. So they're always adding new programs, whether it's the children, teens, the adults, okay? So uh, if nobody has any questions, I just want to say thank you to Jesse. It's always a pleasure working with you. Yeah, and Nancy, and you as well. All right. Um, I do want to say for those of you that are in, um, well, it's really for anybody, but um, for families for at Patchogue Med for this summer, because we weren't really sure what, where we could go, what we could do, we're putting together these themed activity guides. So it involves things this week. It's um, imagining, imagining your story as a chef which is why we invited Chef Rob here. So um, the link in the chat, if you go back to that, um, it's on our summer reading page. You can see all of the guides that we have. There are games on there, crafts, activities, resources you can check out if you wanna learn more. So for the girls that are baking right now, if you wanna check out some more stuff on how you can be a chef, you should definitely go to um, pmlib.org slash imagine your story. Um, we're really proud of those. We think, we hope you guys like them. And thank you so much to Chef Rob. It's so good to see you. <laughs> it's like so thank nice. Thank you so to see much. You. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you for coming. Um, and thank you for coming us. Soon. Yes, sure. And uh, have a great night. Thanks so much. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank bye. you. Enjoy those. Bye, Bye, bye. bye.